everybody, and welcome to another Winter Circle Sports Betting Podcast. It is Tuesday, September the 24th. I'm host Sean Higgs, and we got a first timer on the video, Mr. Matt Fargo, joining me and Chip Chirimbus, my usual Tuesday. Hopefully, this will be the new Tuesday trifecta here. If I get my stuff together. Yeah, listen, technical difficulties, they happen. Chip, yesterday, he had his feed was choppy. We get it. It's technology. Sometimes you have a, we have a, a, a bad day, and it's no big deal. It happens. Um, GamblersWorld.net is our host, as always. Go give them a look. 3738 packages. That's where all the premium stuff is. Now, yesterday, we had freebies. One, one, and one. Uh, a win, a loss, a push. We'll do better today. We got some more Major League Baseball and the, the wild card and uh, playoff kind of push here. Tomorrow, we'll do some college football, NFL on Thursday, uh, Chip and Doug, the live show, Mark Lawrence, Victor King on Friday. Chip also has got Paul Bovey and Jim Fights with some NFL videos coming up as well. So, again, like button, notification was on. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Let's go. It is fun time here ahead. Um, you know, I mentioned the Gamers World website. Chip's going to tell you how good he's doing, as always. Uh, both of these guys, <laughs> the last week in the, the top three, tomorrow's guest, Brian Biller, number one. Uh, I got to do better because every guy I have on here is uh, ahead of me in a one, two, three here. So this is it. Iron sharp, sharpens iron. I got to get my my stuff together. One and one yesterday for me in baseball and football. But here we go. Let's – Chip, we're gonna, we're gonna hold on, Chip. Let's bring in Matt Fargo front center. New to the site, definitely not new to the industry. I've been on sites with Matt going back probably about like 15 years on, on yeah, different kind of things. I, I've, I've never met you or chatted with you. We've, you can just start talking and you came to a, a, a terrible discussion of me, Chip, and his zipper being open. I'm sure people are like, what the heck's <laughs> happening there? So that was so, kind of odd. We don't know if Matt will ever come back after this. You, but, did, did you notice I stayed quiet the whole time? Yes, you stayed quiet. <laughs> I, I, said, I, I don't think I say it out loud. And Well. Here we are. But, Matt, welcome to Winner Circle, Gambler's World. Uh, quick, you know, we'll run down yourself, your past. I know you've been a while, but maybe the people don't know who you are. Please, the yeah, floor is yours. I've been, uh, I've been doing this going on 25 years now. I uh, started off, you know, back in 90 or, no, 2000, right around 2001, I believe. Uh, you know, a bunch of different sites. Uh, and <clears throat> the key, as you guys know, to longevity is just being consistent. Being honest, do with integrity, and that's what I strive for every day. You know, I don't fluff records, do nothing like that. Just keep it real. That's that's the thing. Keep it real. Do your job. Grind every day. It is a grind, but you yeah. know I love it, and as I'm sure you guys do too. It's fun. It's stressful, but at the same time, you know, we make money. We make money for other people, and that's what it's all about. So, hopefully, I have another 25 in me. Uh, knock on wood, and uh, yeah. Just, just having, a, just having a blast doing it. There you go. That's what I always say. Like you just, we win, we lose. The records yep. are there. Yeah. You know, we don't win every day. We're not. It's not some crazy fake Discord or TikTok kind of nonsense where people thought ridiculous stuff. You come on here yesterday, you see our games. Today you'll see our games. Next week you see our games. You go to gamblersworld.net, you see our games that are listed. We, none of us own the site. We can't go in there and bedazzle things like any site we're on. We, we don't do that. So. We like to think we have some good, honest people here. We win more than we lose. That's what it's all about. And we're happy you're joining us, uh, Matt. Thank you. Awesome. Glad to be here. Chip, why don't you um, say how you did last night? I know I know you had your big mega bucks. You've well, been on actually, a roll lately. Yeah, no, we've been we've done really well, you know, coming off the great weekend with a, a September game of the year winner and, and mega bucks in the NFL now um, 3-0 in the regular season. Um, last night, I had no big play. I did have a, a – I did put out a what I call power play, and uh, unfortunately, I didn't take the Redskins. I fell short last night. Like you said, nobody wins every day. It was my only release. I passed in baseball. Um, looking forward to what's coming the rest of the week. But uh, we even swept the, the board on our baseball over the weekend, and tonight we have a play online. It's a mega buck play, a single strongest play of the day for me. Rated and it's at gamblersworld.net. And by the way, Matt, welcome aboard. I've followed your stuff for quite a while, and um, you haven't been as incognito as you might think. <laughs> Thanks, Chip. I appreciate it. Goes back yes. to you as well. I've, I've followed your stuff for a very long time as well. It's been, I've been out there a long time, so uh, uh, my goodness. 
It has been a long time, hasn't it, Sean? <laughs> I, 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 I want to make the joke like you've been on since I was in middle school, but it's probably more grade school since the 80s. It's probably so. grade school, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what, but Mark was like, oh, I got 24 more years in me. I'm like, well, if you're Chip, you probably got it 70 more years in you because he is. Oh, my goodness. You are the Energizer Bunny. Well, now, Energizer Bunny. As long as who, we win, I'll be refueling, you know? I, I'll tell you who needs who needs a battery recharge uh, the, the Cincinnati Bengals. I mean, holy mackerel. <laughs> now, we know they start slow. We get it. This is just forget about the NFL season with a lot of dogs covered. That's fine. We kind of play dogs all the time, so it's not really shocking that a dog wins some for us. But the fact that Cincinnati has laid eggs against the Patriots, who were thought to be like maybe the second worst team in football, and now Washington, who Daniels I kind of like more than Caleb Williams, coming into the weekend, none of these guys have done anything. They look terrible. Like, is this coach making it through the year? I mean, are they making the playoffs? No. Uh, Mark, go ahead, Mark. No, absolutely not. No, I, I I had them last night. You know, uh, minus seven and a half, I believe it closed that roughly. You know, thinking they would bounce back, they were in a good spot. Uh, and there's this you know long time system trend, whatever you want to call it, that you know teams zero and two, you know, tend to bounce back, especially playing on a Monday night. It was like sixty five yeah. percent clip, and and, yeah. and home. You know, they, score, they score on their first drive, things are looking good, and then the defense did nothing. It's, they have no defensive line, none. And that was like Daniels, like he looked like a 10 year veteran out there last night. He did not look like a rookie. And he tore them apart. Matt, they've also had big changes on their offensive line as well. And, you know, Burrow coming off the injury, but I think it's kind of disappointing and surprising, although the Bengals are used to having slow starts. But I agree with you. I, I think they're, uh, they're out of it already with 14 games to go. Yeah. Yeah. And you're right about the offensive line. They've had, they've had offensive line issues for years now. And they keep trying to, you know, build it back, build it back, and they just can't find the right, the right chemistry is for some reason. Yeah. And part of the reason that's why Burrow's been hurt so much, and right. he doesn't look himself either. And they showed him last week, you know, rubbing his his throwing yeah, hand, which yeah. he hurt last year. Yeah. I kind of took that as not much, but something's not right with him either. You know, it's right. just it's just an organization right now that they have so much talent, but they're in so much disarray right now that I can't see him recovering this year at all. Yeah. This line against Carolina was eight and a half. It is now down to a four and a half. That's what people think. That's what the lines makers and odds makers think about Cincinnati right now. Yeah. Well, the red rifle makes them look like a different club completely. Now, now I'm annoyed I didn't take uh, Carolina at that big number before they made that quarterback change. But and anyway, um, real fast, uh, Thursday night Dallas now a four point four and a half point favorite of Giants. I, 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 I like Dallas. I'm a, I'm a Cowboy fan. I don't like this team at all. This four looks – four and a half even looks way too light. Is is the sky falling in Dallas as well? Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. I, I, this is, I think, a good spot for them uh, coming from the fact that if you go back to even last year, um, they played, I believe, nine. They played ten teams that didn't make the playoffs, lost one to Arizona. The other nine, they won by like an average of 27 points per game. So they completely decimate the, the, the teams that aren't any good. Giants are Giants, you know, coming off a win. They're not going to make the playoffs this year. They're not a very good team. Dallas has a good chance to bounce back here and roll. I think they've won 13 last 14 against New York. Uh, I, I think it's a good spot for Dallas to bounce back, especially New York coming off that win. Uh, I think Cleveland is a team that was supposed to be good. They're not good at all. So I think the Giants win is a little inflated because of that. And uh, even though Dallas lost the game, I think they might have gotten a little juice in that fourth quarter, you know, coming back down 28-6, scoring how many ever points they did, 19 points in the fourth. You know, made a game of it, had a chance, you know, get the outside kick and try to tie it up. But, um, you know, they didn't. But I think maybe that gives them a little energy, although there was fighting on the sidelines, both both units. So that's never a good thing. Um I mean, I, I give them a spark, though, after a, a bad start to the season. Maybe I kind of sparked them a little bit going forward. Who knows? Right. I, yeah, I agree. Some teams, you know, that happens. Players need that. And, and it, I think it sometimes can help more than can hurt, for sure. Let's move on to some baseball. Everybody wants their baseball free picks. And we're going to start in the Bronx with Chip Trimis, Baltimore Yankees. Yankees, a 155 fave with Clark Schmidt. Superman himself, Clark Schmidt, Clark Kent, same difference, whoever. Versus Kramer, who I do not love. 
The Orioles, wow, wowzer. This is what happens when you lose 7 to 10, and you, you, you should have this division wrapped up. You've been garbage since the All-Star break. Yanks have put together some wins here to kind of pull ahead here. About to lock up the division. Uh, do you like the Yankees laying the 155? We got an eight and a half on the total. Uh, run line's a little better, plus 125 instead of 155. But your game, Chip, your Yankees, how you feeling? My Yankees. Well, I'll tell you, both these teams uh, have had winning records, of course, but both are losers on the season. This is the biggest lead the Yankees have had against the Orioles the entire year at six games. The Yankees need one to clinch. And uh, Baltimore also needs a win to clinch the a wild card spot. Like you said, four wins in their last 14 games, the Orioles have really gone the pot. I'm not a big Dean Kremer fan, 7-10 and 10 on the year. Um, Clark Schmidt has shown some signs, um, really being able to um, be that extra starter that the Yankees need. Um, his last three starts, he's gone 15 and third, only given up five innings. He was on the disabled list for a while. He hasn't won a game since May 16th. So um, he's probably hungry for, for a win. And, you know, this line being as high as it is, I like the Yankees a little bit in this game. I wouldn't lay a $1.60 or a $1.55. It's just not my style. But I would take a shot with the run line here. They, had a, mm -hmm. they are at home. They're only getting eight at-bats. So we hope you don't get backdoored with a, a run lead and they give up a run in the ninth with the um, – you know, that Holmes are coming out of bullfriend for the Damn. Yankees as uh, he's given up 11 or 13 run, um, saves that he's blown. So that I'm always leery about that when you're playing the run line, about a team having a 5-3 lead and giving up that extra run. But I think they're the side to go with. Uh, I think Baltimore, like you said, they've been in the doldrums. They just haven't been able to cut it. And um, Judge is hot again. I mean, uh, he went those 15, 17 games without hitting home run, and all of a sudden he's back. So uh, – I like the Yankees. Chip Trim, it's official play today. Run line, New York Yankees, plus 125. I'm with you. Like, I hate I, – I'm, I'm a run line guy. That's plus 125, not minus. There we go. Right. Um, I, sometimes I like to – I think I overthink things when I do run lines. Like, I'm not going to lay 130. I'll get fancy and take a 140 run line. But these spots, it's really – I hate to say, like, no-brainer type stuff. But, again, you know, 160 is a little too high for me. Right. As bad as, bad as the always have played – I'm with you here. Maybe an over as well. Like, see the Yanks scoring some runs here. Always have been hitting the ball. Right. Matt is back with us. There we right. go. Oh, now, it, listen, it happens, fellas. It's all right. Uh, any thought on, on Yanks O's there for you? So got anything yeah. to lean on? Yeah. I mean, I have, a, I have a premium play on this tonight, so I won't tip my hand too much. But uh, as Chip said, you know, I, Dean Creamers, you don't know what to get from him. Uh, he has pitched all right uh, over the last month and a half or so, uh, one run or less in the Four of his last seven, I think it is, something like that. You know, one of his bad starts came in Colorado, which is inevitable sometimes. And he's coming off a bad start against uh, the Giants uh, in his last outing, where he gave up two home runs. And he's actually been keeping the ball in the yard recently. I think that was the first time he's allowed a home run in six straight starts. So he's been keeping it in the yard. Obviously, the Yankees are a power team, so that's always weary. Uh, on the other side, you know, Clark Schmidt, like Chip said, He's durable. He is. I think he's coming back at the right time. Give them an extra arm for the playoffs. Uh, he doesn't go deep in games, but I think they're kind of holding him back a little bit. So yeah, um, Yankees can win the division tonight. Orioles can win a wild card with a uh, with a win and losses by the, I believe the Twins, or something like that. They're like a game. They're going yeah, game away. Whatever, whatever the case may be. Yeah, so they, it's a big game for both sides. You know, the Orioles, they, they, they know they still have a shot at the AL East, but they have to win out. The Yankees have to lose out. That's not going to happen. So, yeah. Yeah, they have a – they're they're pretty much set in a wild card. They're plus four. So unless they really go down this, the, the tank here, they should be in, 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 in the playoffs as well. They should, um, they should be, yeah. As, as Matt and Matt said, he's got a uh, premium play today at Gamble's World on that, so go check it out. He is number two the last – right, number two the last few days, last seven days? Number three last seven days, 66.7%, not a bad oh, record. Wow. Yeah, that's pretty good. I don't know. I'm no mathematician. But, you know, <laughs> this isn't this isn't high school where you need the 70 to pass. In, 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 this, in, this, in, this, in this job, you're hitting 66.7%. You're doing pretty darn well. Um, yeah. <laughs> Matt will be looking at the San Diego Padres and the L.A. Dodgers. And I want to say, I don't. it's tough to say like the sinking Dodgers, but 
Hi, you are still in a dogfight with these guys behind you. San Diego's actually won, what, 7-10 to 10 against these guys during the year? King versus Snack. It's basically a, a, a pickup. It's a 115, 120 minus for the Dodgers here, plus 110 for, for San Diego. Total of 8.5. I like King. I like the maneuvers with the Yanks. Um, Dodgers pitching, been a problem all year. Guys getting hurt. Uh, uh, listen, I, I – I said from the beginning, I thought the Dodgers were overrated to the standpoint that they're not going to win 110 games and have some pitcher problems. Lo and behold, half their staff has been out the entire year. Uh, but, Matt, this is one game standalone. King, Knack, Dodgers minus 115, total eight and a half. Take it away. Yep, I like the uh, Padres in this spot. Uh, you know, they've won nine yeah. of ten. They've had the best record uh, since – oh, sorry, since June 21st. <laughs> um, so, yeah, they're playing well. I mean – they're three games back, you know, they have a shot. You know, the first game is the most important game. You know, get within two if they can. Yeah. So, you know, they can, they can come in with some confidence. They're playing well. Uh, King's been phenomenal. Uh, he's lost three runs or less in 19 of his last 20 starts. 2.44 ERA, I believe it is. Um, and he's just pitching great. And, I mean, he's striking people out. Strikeout rate is one of the best in baseball. Right. Um, so, yeah, I, I like him in this spot. You know, going against Knack, who – He's been decent. Uh, he is coming off an outing where he allowed no runs over five innings, which matched his best for the season. But those two starts came against the uh, Marlins and the Angels, two of the worst offenses in baseball. So yeah. take that take that for what it's worth. Um, you know, and I think the offenses are both pretty much a wash. I think the bullpens are pretty much a wash. But I like San Diego in this pitching matchup. Unfortunately, you're not getting as much normally when you're betting against the Dodgers. Normally, the Dodgers are inflated, you know, usually minus 150, 140, whatever. So the line is low, but it's low for a reason. So I like the Padres in the spot. Padres plus 110 for Matt Fargo, his first official video pick here on the channel. Yeah. There we go. Padres Let's make it 1 0. That's it. Okay. We'll get the streak going. Chip, any thought on uh, I, Pods? You know, if these two teams are pretty close together right now. Dodgers have a three-game lead over the Padres, but they're minus 850 on the year. Padres are plus $1,300. So the bookmaker, um, you know, with the Dodgers being 30 games over 500 and minus 840, you understand the difference in baseball between um, laying the number and what you have to lay in the number in football or basketball where the price is 110. Dodgers looking for the 11th title in the last 12 years. But Michael Kane, you said it, Matt, Mark, Matt, he – has 198 strikeouts and 169 innings, uh, one of the best ratios in all of baseball. Um, he's only given up 141 hits, and I bet the Yankees would love to have this guy right now. But <laughs> I think they're the way to go. I think Padres are the side. Um, they've been undervalued the entire season. And yes. the Dodgers are 30, starting this 27-year-old rookie. And um, that's a long time to be kicking around in the minors before you get your shot. But uh, like I said, I... I don't think uh, I think she, I think that Michael King has a desired advantage here, and I would play the Padres. Padres have been, I think, overlooked all year because this is a year they didn't really make a big deal. The last couple of years, they bring in right. a bunch of big guys going for it. This year, they kind of were under the radar, no hype on them, right? The Dodgers spent all the money. Arizona went to the World Series last year. That's the Padres are not going to do much. I, I gotta, I, I gotta disagree, with Matt. Though I think the Padres have a better bullpen. They went out trade deadline, brought guys in. I think you know, shortening the games up when you got an old yeah. Darvish and you know Musgrove's come back from injury, and you know, she's. I think I like the Padres. I think the Padres. I think the Padres and the Phils are probably going to be the uh, battling for to, to get to the World Series out of the NL. That's that's my thought. Their process. Yeah, the Padres have one of the best bullpens since August first, July first, but whatever the case may be. I think they're number two in like ERA and X with all that metric stuff. So yeah, I, I do agree with that. I was looking at like you know full term who's on the active yeah. roster right now. And the thing with the Padres is like they're getting their their pitchers back now. Darvish, how effective he's going to be? I don't know. They got Musgrove back what a month ago. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and and they, and they have a rotation right now of four to five guys that could do some damage. And with that bullpen, yeah. And when you look in the playoffs, bullpen is the way to go because you recently you. Look at some of these games, and you know managers are taking their number one, number two guys out after three, four innings. So you need a big bullpen to to no. coast through. A no hitter will take you down to seven. It's all right. 
Who cares? Right. Who cares? Here, you're at 89 pitches. We can't have you go more. I uh, right. yeah, man. This time it's who is hot, and you get a, a hot bullpen. I mean, we saw the Royals what a decade ago go to the World Series with which was like a bullpen dominating. You get hot, and and who is hot right now? They are they are the hottest right now. So Padres yeah. official play for Matt Fargo. Chip is on the Yankees run line plus one twenty five. I'll get to Mets Braves in one second. Again, these are the free plays. You go to gamblersworld.net for all the premium action. Uh, I got a three pack up tonight. Matt says he has some action tonight. Chip's got plays up. It's baseball. I know it's not as sexy as with college and NFL football here. Everybody's excited. Hey, football. Well, we can make money in baseball. We're going to do it. Now, Mets Braves. Here we go. For all the marbles, basically, because um, one of these guys is probably going to get knocked out of the playoffs, depending on how the series goes. And the Braves, a 140 fa- uh, 142 fave here. Schwellenbach on the hill. Total of eight versus Severino. Another ex-Yankee. Oh, the ex-Yankees are making Yankee fans think, if we just had this guy – we would have had 105 wins this year. You know, Schwabeck's pitched really well. But to me, this is a playoff game, right? This is not, as, as essentially one and done as it's going to be. The, the Mets have a two-game lead over Atlanta, who's staring up at these teams ahead of them in a wild card. It's the do-or-die time here in, in this series versus the Mets. So I'm going to think playoff baseball. I'm going to go under. There's only one way to do playoff baseball, and that's under the totals. The Braves on the season are 32 games to the under, 91 to 50. Nine to the under on the year. That's because the pitching's been great and the hitting's been so-so. Now they got Albies back. That's fine. He's only batting from the right side. Still, Seve's pitched solid down the stretch here. Schwellenbeck was, at one point in August, he was just striking out every other guy he faced. So the door might be out too. Another big batcher missing here in this series. To me, it's under heaven here in this series. I'm going to do all unders, all series, all series long here, Betts, Braves. Because somebody is not going to make the playoffs. And listen, as a as a Met hater, I got to cheer for the Braves here. <laughs> I, you know, Met fans, I, I can't have it. I mean, it, and and good for the Mets. Everybody thought they were going to do nothing this year, and yet, lo and behold, they're they could very well make the playoffs. And uh, which I guess is sweet redemption, considering you traded all those guys away last year and they went to the World Series with with the Rangers. So I mean, I guess I guess it's their I guess it's their uh, climatic moment here making the playoffs. But give me the under eight. Braves, Yanks. Matt, thoughts on my underpick, or if you like something different in this game? Yeah, I, I have a. Uh, actually, I actually have a premium play on this as well tonight. So I will, enough I said. Have to <laughs> but I, agree, I, I do agree with you on the under. This is playoff baseball, right? It, this is it. Like the the Braves season comes out of the, the series. You know, they're two back. Uh, they're in jeopardy of missing the playoffs, which is a surprise to a lot of people for sure. Uh, and as far as this game goes. Yeah, but I think both pitchers ha- have the capability to keep it low. Uh, you know, Schellenbach, he's, he's, he has a two-point – or no, what is his ERA? 3.77, 2.74, I forget off the top of my head. But he, he, had, he got off to a rough start. He's been pitching great. Yeah. He's got one of the best K rates in baseball right now. Uh, great uh, strikeout-to-walk ratio. Uh, as far as Severino, he, he's been pitching good. He has good ERA. He has a bad strikeout ratio, a bad strikeout to walk ratio, but it hasn't really hurt him too much. Nope. So his ERA is at three point, I believe three point seven nine, right around there, something like that. Yeah. So they both they both been pitching good, uh, and I, it is playoff baseball. I think the manager's going to do it that way. And just like I said before, bullpens could come in to play again. So yeah, I do like the under in this game as well. Yeah. All right, Chip, uh, your thoughts on this game? It just happens to be September twenty fourth too. I don't know. Well, you know. And you know what? There was a Gary Sanchez spotting. Um, he was seen in San Diego hitting 217 on the year. I thought I couldn't let the rest of the year go without mentioning that. The Sanchez. Um, yeah, he's the man, Gary Sanchez. Uh, <laughs> Mets in Atlanta, just a big game for both, of course, uh, particularly Atlanta. Um, you know, they're minus $1,900 on the year, man, if you're betting $100 a game with them. And the Mets are plus 1300 Because, like you said, Sean, but we hadn't expected much out of the Mets. No. Severino's won his last four decisions. Shortstop difficulties for the Mets. Uh, Lindor's down. They bring in Acuna, and he's hitting 420. That's the younger brother. This is Luis Angel Acuna, the younger brother of Ron. But, you know... Sean, it's a very famous day in baseball on the 24th, and I can give you a few reasons why. And, uh, Matt, you better get used to this. Um, I, 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 I listen to a few shows, and I know what's coming. All right. In 1919, 
Um, Babe Ruth hit a home run at the Polo Grounds in a 2-1 <laughs> loss on this date. The problem was, Sean, he was already playing for the Red Sox against the Yankees. But the oddity about this game is it was played in the Polo Grounds because Yankee Stadium hadn't opened yet. So Babe Ruth's hitting a home run against the Yankees for the Red Sox in the Polo Grounds, which is kind of unique considering uh, the Yankees only played there two years. And now I've got a couple other for you. Uh, last date, Ebbets Field. Dodgers played there, was today, in uh, 1957. And um, in 1972, a guy by the name of Joe Namath wanted to prove that the 69 Super Bowl was no fluke when he beat the um, Colts, came back with six TD passes on this day. And Al Kaline had his 3,000th hit, one of the great players in baseball, the youngest batting title winner ever. Straight out of high school, he won at 20, before it was Tony's birthday, I believe it was, but he still is the youngest batting top winner. And um, other than that, I think if I had to play this game, I'd play the Mets. I, the Severino's been kind of hot, and uh, um, it's not a, a strong play for me, as you might uh, be able to acknowledge. But uh, let's go Mets, Sean. So you mentioned, Mets. you said that uh, Namath came out to show that his – Super Bowl one was no fluke with six such Is it? Did you mean it was no fluke or no fix with the with the Jets no, winning? Come Mets? on now! Don't pay attention to every New York cab driver you hear. Come on, I mean, what are you talking goodness. about? And I love the Gary Sanchez, the Sanchez. Remember him and the Yanks? They love them. Oh my to- goodness! I, I was the happiest day of my baseball career was not when I played, but when Sanchez got traded from the Yankees. Believe me. Yankees to the Mets, actually Yanks to the Twins to the Mets to San Diego and Milwaukee. Shot, you know what? I mean, in today's baseball, he hit 19 homers with the Padres last year, 72 games. Who cares? He had 218. That's that's borderline Hall of Fame numbers by some of these stat nerds. Yeah, now but with he, the war he's people. surrendering just as many runs if he's behind the plate. Because this guy, this guy's one of the most atrocious catchers if, you've seen. Great arm, if, but it doesn't if, matter when you're if you're going to trot bat. out Joey Gallo still. Sanchez could could get every yeah. day at bats as a DH. He did forty but, homers. You know, one of the one of the reasons they had to get rid of Sanchez is that he couldn't handle the Mets pitcher today, Severino, who couldn't throw his out pitch in a big situation because Sanchez couldn't handle it. But enough of him because he's a BUM. No, oh my God, that's how I really feel. He's a he's a BREW. He's a Brew Crew guy. Anyway, all right, the Sanchez hate is over. Let's get back to the good stuff here. Yep. Chip Trimmers likes the Yankee run line plus 125 over the sinking Orioles. Matt Farlow's first official Winter Circle Sports Betting Podcast pick on the underdog San Diego Padres plus 110 with the Yankee castoff. Terrible. That's what the Yankees do. Trade away good young pitchers. Michael yep. King plus 110. I am looking at under Mets, Braves, and other ex Yankees. There's ex Yankees everywhere. That's what happens when you're a Yankee fan. They trade away everybody. Severino, showing back under the eight for me. Again, these are the freebies. The premium stuff is at gamblersworld.net, our gracious uh, sponsor of the channel. So be sure to follow them as well. Head on over there, support any three of us, or maybe 11 of the other handicappers on the site. There is a leaderboard. Win or lose, always the truth, no hiding from the records. Uh, I will be back tomorrow with Brian Biller talking some college football. Be sure to check that out. Uh, for Chip Trimbus, Matt Fargo, again, welcome to the Winter Circle Gamblers World family. Good luck in your bets today, folks, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.